Hi guys, welcome to our MPLab XCA tutorial for Absolute Beginner series. This is tutorial 33, interfacing a DC motor with peak microcontroller. DC motors are used in many industrial, commercial and domestic applications. We have DC motors in toys, irrigation pumps, robotics, drills and in many applications. So in this tutorial we're gonna learn how you can interface a DC motor with a peak microcontroller. You can see how you can rotate it in other clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. A DC motor cannot be driven directly from a peak microcontroller spin because we know DC motors require high current and high voltage than a peak microcontroller can handle. A peak microcontroller usually operates at plus 5 and plus 3.3 volt and its input output pin can provide only up to 25 milliamp of current which in most of the cases is not enough for a motor. Typical small DC motors require 12 volt and consume 300 milliamp current which is beyond what a microcontroller can handle. However, there are a couple of interfacing techniques that can be used. In this tutorial, we're gonna discuss T interfacing techniques a netch bridge is constructed from four transistors connected to port B. MOSFET transistors can easily carry high current and voltage, which can be enough to drive a small DC mode. For example, the VN66 has an operating voltage of 12 volt with an operating current of about 1 amp. A netch bridge is basically a simple circuit containing four switching elements with a load at the center in an H-like configuration. The switching elements are usually bipolar or FET transistors. The top end is connected to the power supply and the bottom end is grounded. The operation is fairly simple. When Q1 and Q4 are turned on by applying logical 1 at RP0 and RB2, the left lead of the motor will be connected to power supply while the right lead is connected to ground. Current flows through the motor which energizes it, let's say in the forward direction or clockwise direction. If Q2 and Q3 are turned on, the reverse will happen, the motor will rotate in reverse direction or anti-clockwise direction. You should never turn on Q1 and Q2 or Q3 and Q4 at the same time, as you'll short circuit your power supply, this will destroy your bridge or something else in your circuit. This is the first technique that we can use to interface a DC motor with a peak microcontroller using four MOSFET transistors and four diode. Instead of using all these components, you can also use a motor controller chip like the LMD18200T, the L293, the L293D, and many more. The L293 is designed to provide bidirectional drive current of up to 1 amp at a voltage from 4.5 volt to 36 volt, while the L293D is designed to provide bidirectional drive current of up to 600 mm at voltages from 4.5 volt to 36 volt. Both these devices are designed to drive inductive load such as relays, solenoids, DC and bipolar stepping motors as well as other high current high voltage loads in positive supply applications. So these are some of the features as we have said it provides the wide supply voltage range from 4.5 volt to 36 volt separate input logic supply, it has the thermal shutdown, high noise humidity input, output current 1 amp per channel which is 600 milliamp per channel for the L293D, the peak output current is 2 amp per channel for the L293D is 1.2 amp, output clamp diodes for inductive transient suppression, so you can read more about this device from its data sheet that you can access from Texas Instrument website. You can go through this data sheet to understand more how to use this device. So this is how you can connect your L293D to your peak microcontroller. 
You can connect the first motor to output one and two. If you have a second motor that you want to connect, you can also connect it to output three and four. The VS is the supply voltage of the motor. In this case, we are using a 12 volt motor. So we're going to connect pin eight to 12 volt. The VSS is the supply voltage of the chip. The EN1 is to enable the first motor. If you connect it to 5 volt, the first drive is going to be enabled. If you connect the second motor, then we'll have to enable the second EN. We've got two grounds that you can connect to your supply ground. By connecting the enable pin to a pulse width modulation pin of a peak microcontroller, the speed of the motor can be controlled as well. We're going to connect IN1 and IN2 to RB0 and RB1 of a peak microcontroller to provide control signal to the DC motor. So if we supply a logic 0 to RB0 and a logic 0 to RB1, the motor will stop. If we supply a logic 1 to IN1 and a logic 0 to IN2, the motor is going to rotate in clockwise direction. If we supply a logic 0 to IN1 and logic 1 to IN2, then the motor is going to rotate in anti-clock direction. And if we supply 1 to both pins, then the motor is going to stop as well. Let's go to MP Lab project and create a simple code to rotate the motor in clockwise direction for 5 seconds, then stop it for 2 seconds, and then rotate it in anti-clockwise direction for 5 seconds. We're going to use MPLAB code configurator again. Open MPLAB code configurator. We're going to use the internal 8 MHz oscillator. The only thing we're going to change is MCLR pin. We're going to disable the MCLR pin. And port B are configured as digital input on reset. We're going to set the pins where we're going to connect our motor. Said we're going to use RB0. RB0 and RB1, we're going to set these pins as output pins. We're going to also rename them and give them a custom name. The RB0, we're going to name it IN1. RB1, we're going to name it IN2. You can see in the MPLAB code configurator pin manager, two pins are enabled, in IN1 in and IN2. So generate to generate our source code. Project. These are the files generated by MCC. Got MCC.h and pin manager. We're gonna use this generated defines int set high to switch on and int set low. So if you want to send a logic high to RB0, we're gonna just write into one set high. To send a logic zero, we're gonna write into one set low. The same is going to be for the second RB1. To send the logic 1, we're going to write int2 set high. And for logic low, we're going to write int2 set low. So let's go to our main.c file. This is our code. The first thing, we created a delay second to create delays in second. Then in our while one loop, the first thing, we're going to turn our motor clockwise. So we're going to say int1 set high. Then int2 set light, then we're going to create a 5 second delay. Then we're going to stop our motor. We're going to send logic 0 to both int1 and int2. Then after 2 second delay, we're going to turn our motor in anti-clockwise direction. In 1 is going to be low and in 2 is going to be high. And lastly, we're going to stop again our motor. We're going to send a logic high to both pins. And the process is going to repeat over and over again. So let us build our project. Build successful. Let's run. You can see the motor is rotating in clockwise direction for 5 seconds. Then it's going to stop. Then in anti clockwise direction. then it's gonna start again thank you guys for watching this tutorial don't forget to subscribe to this youtube channel to receive more tutorials in the future and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you